Fifth is employment injury. Sixth is family benefit. Seventh is maternity benefit. Eighth is invalidity benefit. And ninth is survivor benefit. Now, if we draw a chart and look at Indian legislation in respect of these ILO benefits, and if you combine the ESI Act, which uh, Mr. Sahu has just now placed before us, that's the one which is most extensive. Comprehensive. Out of nine, eight are covered. And if you add the Employees Provident Fund, all nine are covered. So we must begin by having the understanding that Employees Provident Fund and Employees State Insurance legislation together covers everything that the ILO wants us to cover. Then what's the problem? Now this legislation is designed in order to make sure that that is not available to the entire unorganized labor. I repeat, the legislation is designed, the code 3.0 is designed to exclude the entire unorganized labor from all these benefits which are guaranteed by ESI and EPF. That's the bottom line. And it is in that context that we must discuss today and tomorrow that to what we want to do. Hmm. Chapter 9 of the new code is designed in order to say that all the other benefits in the code elaborated in great detail is not available. The purpose of cha chapter 9 is not inclusion. Purpose of chapter 9 is to exclude all the benefits available in the rest of the code. It's a very mischievous kind of legislation. It's a treacherous piece of legislation. Why did you have chapter 9 in this legislation? To make it appear that you know it covers all the workforce. But 93% of the workforce is excluded from the rest of the statute through chapter 9. And I think that's the issue therefore. So I agree with Mr. Sahu. Can we get all the unorganized workers covered by ESI? Because then 8 out of 9 items of the ILO are covered. What's the problem? It's not a legal problem. Can be easily handled legally. It's not an legal problem. It's a problem about which uh, Professor Ravi Srivastava must enlighten us. What do you need in order to extend these benefits to 93% of the workforce of India? It's a monetary problem. It's a problem related to budget reallocation. Obviously, the self employed cannot be covered in the same manner as the wage employees. So you require fundamentally a distinction between those in wage employment who constitute a little more than half of the total unorganized labor force and those in self-employment who constitute a little less than half of the unorganized labor. So what is the economic model? I don't think you can talk about universal social security without Government making a conscious allocation. So we need our friends from other fields to tell us how much money is required in order to cover everything that social security requires. How much of government budgetary allocation? Pin it down. It will be, I think, a part of the concession made to the corporate sector in the recent period. It will be only a part of that. And so this is not money that cannot be mobilized. There is no political will. It's actually, you know, very strangely, uh, the definitions that are invoked, the definition clause of this legislation is so complicated. It has got so many definitions. Naturally, if you unnecessarily bring together a lot of uh, existing legislation, you have to enlarge the number of definitions. So the litigation on definition clauses can go on for the next 50 years. When the word industry was litigated in the Supreme Court from 1947 till 1978, we did not know what is the meaning of one word, namely industry. That many years of, of litigation we had. And the number of definitions they have given in this statute, it's a paradise for lawyers. And that is the way in which it is cleverly designed. 
can it be simplified? It can be very easily simplified if you have the political will and give the policy direction. Half a dozen law people can say law clerks are enough to correct the legislation. But what you need is political activists in order to address the fundamental question. Uh, I only want to mention that we thought, compared to draft number two, they have removed intermediary agencies. They have not removed intermediary agencies. They have brought it down, brought it back into the legislation through a hidden clause, and that's the only clause I will refer to, and that is in Schedule 5, fifth schedule, entry number four, that matters on which the scheme may make provision includes the creation of agency or agencies that will implement the scheme. In other words, the intermediate scheme, you know, agencies of the last 2.0 is brought back. Why? For the reason that uh, Comrade Swami mentioned, as to mobilize money, pension funds and provident fund money, how do you mobilize it and put it into the market in order to carry on with the bankrupt policies of the present government? Thank you.